All right, welcome to video number two. Okay, it is January 5th, I wanna say, I think. Maybe it's January 6th, no, it's January 5th. And um, we're three days in. I have started reading Twelfth Night. Um, and I'll do a different video about my thoughts on Twelfth Night, but I feel like I'm keeping up pretty well. I mean, I'm only one act in, but I'm not worried about it. Um, I am going to be making Twelfth Night cake today. So Twelfth Night either takes place on January 5th or January 6th, depending on kind of how you start counting. So it's um, after the 12 days of Christmas. So if you start counting on December 25th, versus December 26th kind of determines what day the epiphany is. Um, so Twelfth Night is supposed to mark the coming of the wise men to see Christ um, at his birth. So it's a Christian holiday. Um, there's a lot of cultures that do not celebrate it. So when I was growing up, I was, um, I was raised Roman Catholic. And so we uh, kind of celebrated the epiphany, like we'd celebrate it in church, but we wouldn't really celebrate it like outside of church so really um my parents would always be like we have to keep up the christmas decorations until the epiphany um and the whole superstition of twelfth night is that it's bad luck if you leave your christmas decorations up past then so um my husband and i are actually taking ours down today not for that reason we kind of don't believe in that but whatever um and then the kind of center of the festivities if you celebrated twelfth night was the twelfth night cake and in the twelfth night cake you're supposed to bake a dried bean um and then when you slice it up whoever eats the dried bean gets to be like king for the day or king of the festivities so you could pick like what games you were playing or what songs were going to be sung or whatever and it didn't matter what your station in life was you could become kind of in charge or whatever um so I thought that was kind of a cool tradition I will not be baking a bean into mine because I feel like the recipe is already really complicated I didn't really know where to get a dried bean actually I probably could have gotten one but I didn't want to go to the store and buy one dried bean like that would be weird uh, and I didn't want to buy a whole pack because then what am I going to do with that so I just decided I'm going to opt out of that but I did buy like different kinds of like fun colored frostings to decorate it and um stuff like that so we're going to head to the kitchen and get started and hopefully it'll um you know Four hours from now, it'll be a great, beautiful cake that I can enjoy with my friends. Okay, so we're here in my kitchen and I'm going to start making the Twelfth Night cake. I've read the instructions. It seems like there is a very large amount of mixing bowls involved and I um, was surprised to find out that it ends up creating like a dough rather than a batter. So we're gonna kind of see how that goes. The only thing that I had trouble finding was because, you know, Britain and America are different. Uh, we had to get sweet meats for the Twelfth Night cake. And um, I know that with, uh, you know, a lot of places like in, in the UK, I'm opening them right now. Uh, they have like, you know, candied lemon peel and stuff like that. Well... I wasn't able to find that at the Wegmans, so I got like these little, you know, candied uh, fruit pieces, kind of like candied gumdrops. And so I'm gonna use that and hopefully that'll be fine. So we will see how it goes. I will update taking, you. Are we taking the Christmas decorations down to prevent epiphany bad luck? Well, technically you're supposed to take them down like is it before or after the end? It's like the end today, so I yeah. think we're safe either way. Okay. I didn't know if this is why you had this planned. Oh no, I just thought today would be a good day. Okay. Note to self, find a better way to cut these up. They're very sticky. And it was not fun to try to cut them. And this was not the ideal tool. I'm sure somebody who's a better cook than me could tell me that, but that's what I had. Hi. 
Hi. I am completely winging it right now because it told me to dissolve the yeast in a little bit of warm water. That was it. A little bit. To me, this is a little bit. Is that what a little bit is to the recipe writers? I don't know. Could be half as much. Could be a fourth as much. We're just winging it. All right, so this recipe calls for scalded milk, which um, I thought was gonna be fine. You know, not like I know what I'm doing at all. Um, I've done a lot of baking, but not uh, anything like this before. This is a very new type recipe for me. So I called my husband in here because he's a great cook. And I was like, teach me to make scalded milk. And he was like, I don't know how to do that. So we went on YouTube and we found out. So we're gonna do it. So we're gonna put the burner on to medium. I've got a saucepan, just a regular saucepan. Right away, I'm gonna take my cup of milk and put it in there. And then really all we want is, scalding to me sounds like burning, but that's not really, that's not really what you wanna do. You wanna just wait until the bubbles start to form on the milk. So like the key here is not to like get the milk so hot that it curdles, but just that it gets kind of like to a boil. So you have to watch it and stir it frequently till it's kind of at that point. So hopefully it won't take too long. We're still waiting on that yeast to kind of get frothier. And then I've got to start preparing the actual dough, mixing the yeast in with the initial flour mixture that you saw me create with the endless flour sifting. So I'm off to stir. So as I'm stirring here, waiting for the milk to scald, um, I did want to tell you, I found out why you needed to do this. So they said in the olden times, like maybe in Shakespeare's time, uh, milk wasn't pasteurized. This helped get rid of a lot of the uh, bacteria. But nowadays people scald milk because it will make a sponge type cake springier. So I think with this cake, based off of what I've read and researched, it's very heavy. It's got a lot of heavy spices. It's got all those sweet meats in it. So I think that um, it needs to have something that's gonna like puff it up. You know, like even with the yeast, um, it has to rise twice before I can even put it into the oven. So this is a very like uh, heavy duty, in depth sort of dough here that we're working with. I've made a lot of breads before, so hopefully that will help in my preparations. Okay, so I'm at the part that's a little bit more traditional about to mix like the eggs, the sugar, and then like, there's a bunch of spices that go in it, like cloves, which I've never used before. So I'm kind of excited about this part. I think it'll be a little bit more of my speed instead of scalding milk. Um, but I'll give you guys a little bit of insight into uh, what it looks like once I get everything in there. Cause this is where I put in the sweet meats and I'm like, <laughs> this really imprecise recipe is killing me. It says a few cloves and then a dash of ginger. How do I know how much to put in? It's all just a risk. Okay, so here is my current mixture. Uh, very colorful with my sweet meats. Um, I added fresh ginger. I just think it tastes better. Um, and I did about, I don't know, quarter of a teaspoon, so hopefully it won't be too overpowering. But it's uh, mixing time now. So I'm pretty sure that the butter I used was too cold. But it's a little bit late for that, so we're just gonna go with it because I don't have any extra sweet meats and they're already in there and we'll just hope it turns out okay. It's, it's all gonna be fine. I'm gonna be less type A this year. It's gonna be fine. Okay, 
Okay, my vacuum cleaner is going and there's like music playing, so it's really loud here. So hopefully you can hear this. I finished the dough. I'm pretty sure this is entirely way too wet, but um, I don't know. I've never made Twelfth Night Cake before. It said if it was too stiff to add more eggs and I was like, how would it be too stiff? There is so much liquid involved, but I, I y'all, we're in this together. Things are happening. They're happening at least, so we'll see. I still have um, this flour that I'm going to add after it's supposedly risen, so we'll see. I'm hesitant to add more flour now before that point because I don't want to mess it up. Like it could be, I don't know, somehow it, this moisture gets absorbed or I don't know. We'll see what happens. So we're gonna wait about an hour to see uh, if it rises. Okay, so because the dough was really wet, um, I just knew there's no way it was gonna rise and I felt really underconfident about it. So I went ahead and instead of waiting for it to rise and then adding the reserve mixture, I added the reserve mixture of extra flour and salt in the hopes that it will rise. Um, it, it really came together a lot better. I still feel like it's too wet to really rise um, so I kind of went online and I did some extra research, looked at other recipes for Twelfth Night Cakes. So the one I'm using is the Folger recipe, um, and a lot of them are very different. Like, as in, I haven't found, like, one consistent recipe. Like, it's not like sugar cookies where everybody generally has the same sort of ingredients and same kind of like way to make it so that didn't really help too much um so i'm not feeling great about that but my idea here is either it's not gonna rise and just be way too wet to kind of form into the ring that they want um me to make so you're supposed to get kind of like a a dough that is more like a bread like thing that you could kind of put in a ring um, if I don't get that what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just heavily grease a bundt pan and then I'm just gonna cook it in that and hope that it cooks all the way through um, so this could either be something that's just like oh like I need to cook it in a bundt pan or it could just fall apart very quickly so um, you know we'll see I don't feel upset about it I don't I mean like if it doesn't work out it doesn't work out like luckily a lot of times baking ingredients are really inexpensive like it doesn't cost that much for me to get flour and eggs and milk so hopefully no matter what I still think it's kind of a cool experience and it's a cool thing to try but I really hope it works out just like a like obviously I want it to work but I've never made a cake with sweet meats in it and um, I'm feeling very British and would uh, kind of like to see that turn out well see what it tastes like so we are now on the clock for 30 minutes then I'm going to check and see if it's risen at all um, if it hasn't I might add a little bit more flour then try it for another 30 minutes and just kind of like I'm just sort of experimenting here uh, so yeah we'll see so it ended up forming into a ring really nicely. Um, so I was really happy with this, but unfortunately when I put it into the oven, it ended up kind of spreading into this gross gelatinous blob. And so I ended up just kind of scooping it into a bunt pan, which ended up looking really great. So I was super happy with that. <laughs> uh... <laughs> So, it, <laughs> things are uh, not going well. Um, I'm still hoping that I can save this cake. Um, we'll see. You know, I'm worried about 
just how long it's going to take to cook and whether or not it's going to cook well, whether or not it's going to taste any good and, you know, I, 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 I'm not holding out hope really at this point. Um, I'm hoping that it at least looks decent enough to get like a cool video. I don't know if it'll taste good, but that's life, you know? Again, trying not to be type A. As you can see, husband's drawers are still open. Things are still good. Even though I had been meaning to read Act 2 of Twelfth Night today and did not get there. Don't know if I will. Things are fine. This is all about growth. And I'm growing in the fact that recipes online are not always the best and I'm not a very good cook and Tough Night Cake is really, really hard, and I wish I had followed a recipe of the raisins instead of sweetmeats, and... Oh! <laughs> so, um, first of all, I'm really sorry the lighting is terrible in my kitchen, but, you know, c'est la vie. So, a little bit ago, when I scooped the gross mess that was the uh, attempt at Twelfth Night Cake, into the bunt pan, I also bumped up the temperature on the oven, so it was set at 300, and typically when I've made cakes in the past, it's like 350, 375, and it was like, cook it at 300 for like an hour and a half, and I was like, what if I cook it at 350 for 45 minutes instead? Um, and pro tip, if you know nothing about baking, um, I will tell you that that is normally a really bad idea. However, I chose to do this because it really wasn't cooking like it was sort of sloppy it was falling apart even like the outside was like just gross wet like bleh. and I was really concerned that it was just never gonna cook and it would just like become this like flat ew so I did this and um, it's been about 30 minutes since then and the cake looks freaking fantastic. So I'm really excited that it's actually kind of working out. This is really bad. You should never really open the oven when you're cooking something, but I just wanted you to get a good look at that. Beauty, right? Looking good. I'm so excited. Okay. So the cake actually turned out really well. Um, I'm super happy about it. The only thing I'm not happy about is because it did rise, you know, with that yeast and stuff and it wasn't really designed to be a bunt. It's got um, a lot of extra dough here um, at the bottom. It's pretty heavy, but it still seems kind of breakable. So I was going to cut off the bottom, but it just didn't seem like the best option. Mmm, crumbly. So, I've just decided I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna like deal with it being kind of ugly. Um, and it's mostly cool now. Could probably use a little bit more cooling before I decorate it, but I'm not gonna do that because we're going over to a friend's house in about 15 minutes and I'm bringing this cake. So, I'm gonna go ahead and decorate it and Hopefully it'll look pretty and um, yeah. One thing about my decorations is I was dumb and I bought the pastel colored frosting at the store. So instead of red, I have pink. And instead of a dark green, I have like a grass green. It's gonna look like an Easter cake. Oh well, I feel like the story of this cake has been, oh well. <laughs>
Okay, so I'm almost ready to reveal my creation, but um, I really tried to rush the frosting and the cake was way too hot. And so I kind of went with a like mosaic unicorn look. It's a little bit sloppy, but uh, a lot of the um, cakes I saw online, it was like a free for all with the frosting. So I'm gonna go with it. And honestly, it's all sugar, it'll taste great, so. Let's see it. All right, friends. So my cake is in the freezer, which is why I don't have it in my hands right now. My husband just very helpfully reminded me that waiting for a cake to cool down to put frosting on is something that you should not rush. Thank you. Well, I rushed it because we have places to be in four minutes. So let me get the cake and show you how it turned out. Okay, here it is, my Twelfth Night cake. And since uh, unicorns are very in style, I think it's appropriate, not that side, don't look there, that doesn't look as pretty. Ooh, ah. And hopefully it'll taste just as good. Oh no, and hopefully it won't slide off the plate again. Some of the cake um it was weird probably the weirdest cake i've ever had not that it was bad it was just so odd because it has in it um cloves and fresh ginger and then it's got the candies in it and it was just like it was just like a weird combination of flavors and it was very dense and i don't know if that that it's supposed to be that dense but it was very dense um and it was just like a weird like it was just a weird combination of flavors but i thought like if you could get a piece of the cake with the sweet meats and the frosting and eat it all together it tasted really good but if you had just like you know like the cake with the frosting was kind of weird cake on its own was okay that was pretty good it was kind of like just like a weird spice cake um but it was just like it was just unusual. So I think kind of ultimately my takeaways are, um, one, don't frost a cake when it's hot, which I knew not to do, but just to reiterate that point. Um, two, it was very time consuming and very difficult. Uh, this is definitely not a recipe for someone who's a, an experienced baker. And I feel like I'm not inexperienced, but I wouldn't say like, I'm anywhere close to being like, you know, a master. Like I've, I've baked bread before and I baked cakes before, but this was pretty complex. This isn't just kind of like making a white cake, you know, um, or like chocolate chip cookies. And then I think my, my other kind of takeaway is like, I, I, I don't think I would, I don't think I liked it enough to make it again. Um, it, it was a lot of work for what I felt like was very little payoff. I don't regret it. Like, I'm really glad I did it because I think if I didn't do it, I would just wonder like, oh, well, would it have been good or I should have made it, you know, like I think giving it a shot, I'm really happy about like, and I'm glad that it turned out, I feel like the way it was supposed to. Um, so I'm proud of myself and I'm glad I tried it, but I don't think I would do it again. Um, but if you're interested in making Twelfth Night Cake, I've linked the one, um, the recipe I've used below, as well as I linked that video that we watched about scorching milk. And um, I'll, I'll also say I looked at a New York Times cooking recipe for Twelfth Night Cake, which seems very different. It's got raisins and almonds. It seems a little bit more like a traditional, or maybe a modernized version, as opposed to the like, hardcore Shakespeare one that I used and I'll link that below too in case you're interested in giving it a shot but you want something that's a little bit more normal <laughs> don't want to work as hard as I did um but anyways yeah and we'll see you guys soon bye